Well, that's what I learned from studying the history of totalitarianism in the 20th century, is that a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. And that's for sure. And it's so funny, you know, people who think, when they're thinking about the relationship with divinity or the relationship with God, they think it's a primitive and childish way of thinking. What if a miracle just manifests? Why can't a miracle just manifest itself? And I would be convinced. And the funny thing is, is first of all, actually you wouldn't be. If a miracle actually happened, you would actually forget about it in about six months. That's, I mean, you'd think that's not true, but it's true. You would actually forget about it because that's what people are like. But there are negative miracles that are happening all the time, which, which actually lends some credence to my supposition. And we don't pay any attention to that. If we can't learn from what happened in the 20th century, then we are absolutely incapable of learning. Because what happened in the 20th century was as bitter a set of lessons as you could possibly imagine. It's interesting, you know, like the most profound people that I've read who've meditated deeply on the problem, say, of totalitarian catastrophe, and I would put Alexander Solzhenitsyn at the top of that list, you know, the, his, his entire corpus, three volumes, 700 pages long each in tiny type, is a long scream about the absolute necessity of individual the absolute necessity of individual honesty and ethical behavior as the only bulwark against totalitarian catastrophe. And, the, and I've read many writers who've attempted to diagnose the problems of the 20th century. And I think Solzhenitsyn, he came to the same conclusions that Viktor Frankl came to as a consequence of his experiences in the Nazi concentration camps. And Frankl, I am, I'm also an admirer of Frankl, but Solzhenitsyn takes it to an entire different level of profundity and makes an extraordinarily strong case that not only do societies deteriorate because the people within the societies become individually corrupt, but that the only way to stave that off is for the individuals within that society to reject that corruption in the, in the confines of their own personal lives. And he tells endless stories of people that he met in the gulag, in the, in the work camps, in the death camps in the Soviet Union, of people, and this is what he learned, of people who were so incredibly tough that even under conditions, the most possible extreme conditions, there wasn't a chance that they were going to step off that straight and narrow line. There was nothing the authorities could do to move them. 